Breaking news, Sony's tired of the Nikon Z8 winning everything and they're fighting back. Their Z8 killer has been leaked. They're also launching a new firmware update for the A7S III and A1. Nikon launched a new lens, Canon leaked the lens, and we have some details about the upcoming Panasonic GH7. I'll tell you all about it, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes websites for your web presence. This is something that you completely control. You do not control social media. Social media exists to make social media money. Squarespace exists to make you money. Squarespace shows off your skills in the best light possible. Set up a website, get your own custom domain, custom email addresses, sell products, take appointments from clients, get started today at squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out free, no credit card, none of that. When you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. First, I want to talk about the Sony hack that happened about a week ago, and I didn't immediately cover it, but this ransomware organization claims to have hacked into Sony and apparently they leaked some internal documents and they wanted to be paid or they would release it to the public on September 28th. Sony didn't confirm it, but they said they were looking into it. And then September 28th came and went and there was no big document release. So what is going on and should photographers be worried? Well, yeah, you absolutely should be worried. If you have a Sony account, whether it's for your camera or your PlayStation, it's entirely possible the data has been leaked in one way or another, and it's never a bad idea to go in and, one, use a unique password that you don't use on other websites, but two, just update your password. Please do that. But Sony hacks are particularly concerning to Sony photographers because if you update your firmware, particularly with a Mac, you will discover that you have to install kernel level drivers in order to update the firmware on your camera. Here's the concern. I don't think Sony is going to try to hack my computer, but I don't think Sony's IT security is perfect. And I think if a hacker broke in, they could update the firmware update process, abuse that kernel level privilege that so many people grant to their computers, and then install something like a, a webcam monitor that would spy on you or a keystroke monitor that would gather your data. And that would be very concerning. And that's why I think Sony hacks are extremely relevant to photographers. Now, the update to this is we have no update. The September 28th came and went, there were no files released. Sony has not given us any other information. And so my best guess is that Sony paid off the ransomware organization. And what normally happens in these scenarios is the company doesn't tell the world, hey, we're paying off a ransomware organization because when you pay them off, you actually encourage them to do more crime. So other companies don't want you to pay off. They want you just to take the hit. So when they do pay them off, it tends to just disappear quietly and that's what's happening. But of course I have no information because they provided no information. That's just my best guess as a former IT security consultant. Now that exciting Z8 killer camera leak that I told you about coming to us from SonyAlphaRumors.com. This is about the Sony A9 Mark III, which will definitely come at some point. The A9 series of cameras is Sony's sports-centric cameras. Historically, they've had high frame rates, like 20 frames per second, and tend to have lower megapixels, 24 megapixels, which is perfect for what the professional sports shooter wants, and the price point is less than their flagship Sony A1. But the Sony A9 Mark III specs are a little surprising. The rumor says that the camera is going to be using one of Sony's public camera sensors, like they sell camera sensors to companies like Nikon. And so we can discern a lot of the specs from the capabilities of that particular sensor. The sensor itself is 44 megapixels and is capable of doing a full readout at 26 frames per second. So you could do 26 frames per second raw, theoretically. It will also read out the video portion of the sensor, like 16 by 9, at 60 frames per second. So you could do 8K at 60 frames per second, and it's capable of pixel binning, like grouping four pixels into one at 120 frames per second for the video. So you could do 4K at 120 frames per second. And these are great specs, and in fact, they pretty closely match the Nikon Z8 and Z9. And that is something Sony can't do right now. They really can't do 8K60. Those are the rumors, but here are my thoughts on what the other specs would be. I think the Sony A9 Mark III based on the sensor specs, 
would be able to shoot lower res images at 66 frames per second. That would be at about 17 megapixels. And that would be very appealing to sports photographers who've traditionally shot even at just 20 megapixels. They don't need a lot of megapixels for printing photos in the paper or online, but the high frame rates really do help. And that's something the Z8 and Z9 do well also. Or you'd be able to drop down to an even lower megapixel, 5 megapixels at 142 frames per second. That's the kind of specs that a Canon R3 can do, even at higher megapixels. And I would bet Sony would throw in pixel shift capabilities for up to 176 megapixels, similar to what they have in the A7R5 and A1 now. I'm guessing the body would be identical to the Sony A1. That means a tilt screen that does not flip forward. That means that second dial in the upper left side of it. That means two CF Express Type A cards that double as UHS-2 SD cards, and probably the same mechanical shutter mechanism to give it a 1 400th sync speed for high speed flashes, the kind of thing sports photographers find really useful. So those are the specs, but what's weird about it is this is very much overlapping with their existing flagship, the Sony A1. And while it's likely that Sony does want to compete with the lower priced Z8, I don't see them creating a camera that would pretty much put the A1 out of its place. They'll have to find some way to carve out a niche for the A1 that makes it a higher end camera. Now Nikon faces the same struggle with the Z8 and Z9 and what they ended up doing was holding back some software features from the Z8, giving the Z8 a shallower buffer depth and maybe that's the approach Sony will take or maybe Sony is planning to also launch a Sony A1 Mark II that will have significantly better specs like a higher frames per second or maybe even higher megapixels. This might be related. Sony Alpha Rumors is saying that a new firmware update is coming to the A1 and I think that that's going to include some features we've been waiting for, things like focus breathing compensation, animal IAF in video, and support for their monitor and control app. In their FX3 and FX30 cameras, I think, they now support being able to connect directly to your iPhone and using your iPhone as a monitor, basically like just a real-time field monitor. They also announced that that feature would be coming to the A1 and A7S III. Unfortunately, it's just not available yet. So I think in the next big firmware update, we'll definitely see that added for both of those two cameras. And the December timeframe seems about right, and it can't come soon enough for me. I've also seen rumors about the Panasonic GH7. If you're familiar with the GH series, that is their flagship series. It is a video-centric camera. Now, we recently reviewed the Panasonic G9 Mark II. That is their stills-centric flagship camera camera and it added phase detect autofocus which did not solve all their autofocus problems but it did improve the autofocus performance and it would make a lot of sense if they were to take that same PDAF technology and move it into their GH7 series of cameras which are kind of the cameras that really need it the most because video really benefits from face detect autofocus even more than sills cameras because in video you're shooting continuously and any sort of pulsing becomes extremely visible so while this is just a rumor i would be extremely confident that panasonic would release a gh7 with pdaf something based on the g9 mark ii but if you want that tech now go ahead and get a g9 mark ii it's almost the same as a gh7 would be it's just the recording times won't be quite as long Canon rumors said a new Canon lens is coming and it is an updated RF 70-200 f2.8. That might seem weird because Canon's 70-200 f2.8 is not old. It has not finished its life cycle at all yet. Here's the thing about the current RF 70-200 f2.8. It is optimized for size and weight and it is fantastic at that. There is no lens I'd rather have in my bag than that Canon. But to actually shoot with, I'd rather pick up the Sony or Nikon version of it because they're not optimized for weight, they're optimized for professional use, weather sealing, and most importantly, image quality. Canon needs a lens that more closely competes with the Sony and Nikon versions, optimized for not size and weight, but for image quality and weatherproofing. And so it makes total sense to me that this is coming soon. So if you are thinking about buying that 7200 f 28 and you want those more professional traits, maybe just hold off a bit. In other news, this is not a rumor, Nikon actually launched the 135mm f1.8 portrait lens, their Plena lens. I'm sure it is optically perfect. Subscribe to see our full review as soon as that lens is released. 
but I do have a problem with it. The price is basically $2,500. You can check it out here. And that is significantly more than the similar Sony lens. Now, at KEH, Sony lens is $1,412. It's going to be a little bit more than that new, but still, I'm wondering if Nikon's high prices mean that they're choosing Canon's sort of a printer and ink strategy, where you sell the bodies inexpensively, like the Z8 is incredibly inexpensive for its capabilities, and then really raise the prices on the lens so you can sort of make up your profit margins after the consumer has purchased into a system. This seems like a lot of money for a 135 f1.8 portrait lens, but we'll see if it's actually worth it soon. In the comments down below, tell me what you think about the upcoming A9 Mark III. What should Sony do with it? What should the Panasonic GH7 be? And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the tool you use to build your real home on the web because somebody else owns social media, right? They could put ads in your site. They're trying to make money off you. Squarespace sells skills. Squarespace sells you. You design your own Squarespace website with your own custom domain. You make yourself look great so that you can sell a project, share information from the world. Whatever you have in mind starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. It's a totally free trial. No credit card required. Go there and see how easy it is to set up. And if you love it, I'm sure you will. The coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. Bye.